Hello, my name is Eric Cortez. I am the Scrum Master for Group 1 for our Swing 894 Capstone Penn State project. Uh, we also have online Michael Young, our software developer, Michael Laredo, our software developer, Nathan Fox, our software developer, and Michael Rodriguez, our software developer slash test, develop, test uh, developer. And today we're going to go over our Sprint 2 uh, review for Pantry Chef. So what's the agenda? So our agenda is going to be Sprint review, the Sprint 2 retrospective, the test report, and also we're going to demo the latest features of Pantry Chef. Sprint review. So what was initially planned for the Sprint? Well, this was our second Sprint, and we've increased a lot of productivity during the Sprint. We actually had planned 18 use cases, but during the course of development, we were only able to develop 14 of them. Now, with that being said, we worked very hard to keep up the productivity. So in this case, we actually produce 14 use cases. And those 14 use cases are logout, reset password, manage milk preference, create user's landing page, add different pantry profiles, manage pantry, add items to pantry, remove items from pantry, manage shopping lists, find recipe, database admin, view user's profiles, ret retrieve recipe preparation, and verify account with email link. And then the very most important use case of all of them was to see the database. And we'll have a little bit more talk about seeding the database in a later slide where we go over the software architecture. Now, the issues that weren't uh, completed during Sprint 2, which are going to carry on to Sprint 3, were the manage user of Pantry Chef, change user's password, view recipe, and sort user's ingredients. And there's a link down below to the Sprint uh, retrospective for Sprint 2 to see what our retrospective feedback was. But I'll also share that with you in the next couple of slides. So, as I said before, velocity increased from Sprint 1 because A, we increased the number of meetings and we redirected the meeting to a Scrum-like atmosphere. And also, we kept the gas to the pedal or the pedal to the metal. We kept working through Spring Break and the web technology learning curve, we believe we flattened because a lot more people were getting more information and doing a lot more research. So as you can see, in the Sprint 1, we were only uh, able to complete 13 user stories. But in Sprint 2, we increased that uh, dramatically into 79 user story points. And we actually overcommitted <laughs> from our original plan 52. And then you can also see at the bottom of the link there, our velocity chart in JIRA. Sprint retrospective for Sprint 2. Here we go. Well, so our retrospective, we had a lot of feedback from a lot of our members. And here's some of the basic questions we asked our members. What were the technical difficulties impacted for project development during Sprint 2? Well, we had some API gateway issues and deployments with certain lambdas that were becoming unlinked, which caused failures of sub upon subsequent deployments. And Michael uh, Young can talk about that a little bit more in the architecture. Um, and also, uh, one of the retrospective questions was, what went well? Well, what went well was basically all of us collaborating together. You know, we increased the meetings. We went from one meeting a week to three meetings a week. And then we also switched to a Scrum-like atmosphere, which, which basically provided more collaboration and more troubleshooting opportunities across the whole team. What didn't go so well? Well, we didn't plan for testing. You know, we were taking the traditional approach to development, and we over, we over, uh, we took an overshot with the testing, which got, uh, just, we were so distracted by the development, we we did not do any planning for testing. But uh, with that being said, we still were able to plan the last week of the sprint to do some testing over the use cases that we were tracking in Jira. So some of that will be talked to in a later slide by uh, Michael Rodriguez. And uh, what else? What can we do better for the sprint? Or what can we do better in our next sprint? 
Well, we need to remove the clutter, the clutter and duplicates of use cases from the sprint board. Probably need to start adding new stories as well as new features and bugs come to light. So basically, we're seeing that when we wrote these use case stories, we didn't really have the full picture until we started development with the traditional approach. And as we're doing this traditional approach, we're actually seeing more use cases and a little bit uh, corner cases too that come up. But uh, we're starting to do that a lot better now going into Sprint 3. So our development approach, we still stay the same. We, we basically have all of our front end design uh, being mocked up with the uh, UI UX. And then also we have our, our back end design as well uh, being developed at the same time. But we're not doing the test driven development. We're actually doing the test development approach. And uh, our requirements, they have not changed uh, so far. We, we've, we've added new use cases, but the basic core functionality of Pantry Chef has remained constant. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Michael Young to talk about our software architecture. All right, so the software architecture that we initially planned for uh, is relatively unchanged with a, a few changes, mainly in the API gateway. So previously, we had planned to have uh, request models which form a contract on the input set uh, or payload that a user submits. We aren't actually taking advantage of that right now. All the validation will happen within the Lambda, just for a little bit more clarity. We didn't want to decouple too many things. We wanted to keep uh, more cohesion in the actual microservices, <clears throat> um, as well as the response models. We aren't leveraging those either. We're passing the responsibility off to the uh, Lambda microservice. Another. Um, key different uh, thing that we've implemented was the Cognito service actually leverages the DNS, um, which is Route 53 in AWS. So that's just for the welcome page after registration. And the major, um, aside from the API gateway, uh, change was the database pivot. So we essentially scrapped using um, my fridge food as a scraper because of inconsistencies with tags and uh, the data we were getting back was just dirty. So we ended up uh, looking for an, a new API called Spoonacular and we began scraping that um, every day and have about 30,000 entries that we're going to be putting into the database uh, very soon. <clears throat> and with that, the database schema itself will change slightly to incorporate a few more details that we're going to have and uh, things like nutritional information or uh, furthering our diet types list. Um, and it will just overall enrich in the application with better data, um, <clears throat> more images, more everything. But we are limited to 5,000 crawls a day or yeah, 5,000 crawls a day. Um, so we are going to be continuously doing that every day at 6 p.m. Uh, PST, and by the end of this capstone project, we should have a, a decent amount of data that we can do a lot with with our algorithmic component. <clears throat> and the API issues we had, we had a, a, a few uh, hiccups in the beginning. Um, we accidentally deleted our uh, infrastructure, and we realized that we could spin it back up in only two hours. So that is kind of a good disaster recovery uh, situation. Uh, unexpected test, but we uh, we survived it pretty well. And we also had uh, several issues with API Gateway. Uh, as Eric was mentioning, the API Gateway has a linking mechanism between uh, the API service and the uh, microservice. And whenever we were changing the uh, actual API Swagger file, we found that some of the uh, lambdas became unlinked with the API, which caused the API to go to nowhere. Um, we had to manually go in and uh, fix that linking and redeploy the API anytime we wanted to make an API change. So that is currently being investigated to see if we have a, a better approach than touching uh, infrastructure manually. <clears throat> as far as uh, overall architecture, uh, I, again, I'm pretty proud of it. I think that uh, it is a robust design that's highly scalable. Uh, we have had a few hiccups, but 
largely I don't expect uh, any major new design decisions to be uh, coming into light for Sprint 3. The only thing we're going to be looking at is the algorithmic component and how uh, our design can work with that. So that's all I have. And now I believe I'm going to pass it off to Rodriguez. No, no, sorry, Nathan. Uh, yes, uh, and I will be talking about the source control. Um, we really worked hard on the sprint, as you could tell by our previously went over sprint review tasks, but you can also see from our commit history. Um, the first large bump was our implementation at the end of sprint one, um, which was adding a lot of structure and a lot of the base files. Um, and the second large bump was a much more uh, group effort in pushing like 50 commits per week uh, during and before spring break. Um, and it included most of the functionality that we talked about in the sprint. Um, and I think this is, it was definitely spread out much better amongst the team as we all started to learn the tech, the view technologies and AWS intricacies. Um, and these changes include everything from like our CloudFormation scripts to Lambdas to view controls, database seeding, Spoonacular recipes, and basically everything else. So I'd encourage you to look through the code and, and see what we've changed um, when you have time. Um, and now I would pass it off to Michael Rodriguez to talk about the test report. Yeah, so the testing environment will be end-to-end -end testing using Test Cafe as a testing framework. Test Cafe emulates end user actions on the web application. It is designed to imitate any end user actions such as clicks, typing text, selecting text, and any other actions the user needs to produce the desired output. Those test cases below, like such as login, logout, find recipe, view recipe, are not complete. And the other test cases that we have linked to use cases are being tracked on Jira and are in work right now. So now I'll pass it to Loretto for the pantry demo. Okay, so from the login page, uh, I'm going to go with with uh, my user account to log in and show what progress we've made so far in terms of features and uh, with this project so far. So after login, we have our main, I guess, menu bar on the left side where we're pointing the pantry at the uh, at login. Um, any any uh, I guess user account can have multiple profiles for different ingredients, different uh, essentially pantries is a concept here. Um, so for mine, I have I have two profiles, and this one's the one I'm pointing to at the moment. This one's unnamed, uh, so that's why it looks like that. But the actual ID coming from the database is 12, so that's that's how we're tracking it at the moment. So for the for this page, uh, the pantry page, we are tracking ingredients that uh, essentially mirror what the user has in their pantry, which then gets used to find recipes. So we on this. On this side, we have a autocomplete um, uh, widget that will allow us to add uh, specific ingredients that are part of that pantry. Uh, and then when we add it, we can see on the right side they are they're added on the side. And just to show that it's it stays there when we refresh, we show that dragon fruit is still uh, persistent. So all this is coming from uh, the database calls through the AWS Lambdas API gateway that whole infrastructure, uh, and then vice versa. We can take our ingredients on, on this side and remove it um, and see that it's it's been removed here. And to refresh, it's also not being part of the, of the database anymore. So that's what this page uh, is focused on. And then ingredients is more of the shopping list um, where these are ingredients that are intended, I guess, to be purchased at the store and where this will come into play is with recipes where we want to find recipes that based on ingredients that are in the pantry, this will extend that search uh, to then include intended ingredients that uh, are gonna be bought. So we can we can get 
more uh, more varied results and in, in recipes and and what the possibilities are. So ingredients it mirrors what's what's on the pantry page uh, for the most part. Uh, other than calling a different different uh, database for a shopping list versus the ingredients list or pantry list. So that's uh, that's what's different is is just the call to that specific uh, um, table. So then when we go to ingredients, we are taking the ingredients list to then try to get matches with uh, recipes that are currently in our, our database. So we have them in a tile format or card format. Uh, where we, of course, have the title, how many ingredients are matching, the actual ingredients, and any other attributes that we're, we're tracking in our in um, our API calls to uh, the table. So this is a, this was a big step for this sprint that we didn't have last uh, during the last demo. Uh, so then the next step here that got moved to sprint three is we can view specific recipes in a in a in a uh, format that makes sense uh, to the user to include detailed ingredients and uh, other attributes that are part of that recipe. So this is work that's going to be done in uh, Sprint 3. And then settings, there's also a decent amount of work being being uh, uh, worked on in Sprint 3 to, to uh, focus on uh, passwords, uh, our profile management, uh, and then food preferences, having more attributes that can potentially have an effect on those recipe uh, results in the previous page. So that's the that's the bulk of the new features and kind of a demo walkthrough of what's what's been added. And I be I believe uh, what we're going to look at now is a test demo. Is that correct, Eric? We we got well. I wasn't going to plan to do a test demo, but uh, yeah, we, no, that's we fine. Could, yeah, not a not a problem. OK, but uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. OK, and uh, after that, uh, pretty much that concludes our Sprint 2 review and our Sprint 2 retrospective. And we also just want to, you know, I wanna, I'm the Scrum Master, if I didn't mention that before, and I just want to thank the guys for all their hard work they've done during the last two sprints. Uh, it's greatly much appreciated, and uh, we're going to still keep on pushing hard, especially now that we're four weeks left, and uh, we'll see you again. Well, thank you, guys, and, and also thank you, Professor. Thank you.